what's up everyone and welcome to another video there are races on the horizon and when there are races on the horizon people tend to think hmm so i suppose i better do something to improve my performance quickly so i suppose i better change my body composition and lose a bit of weight and when people do think that they often also think so i suppose i ought to do some staff training but what is staff training does it even work? What benefits might there be? Well, it seems like a good time to answer some of those questions. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video today. what staff training is and it's quite simply training with reduced energy availability remember we get our energy from stored fat and carbohydrate we can store a lot of fat we can't store very much carbohydrate we need the carbohydrate to fuel higher intensity exercise performance but there are at least five different ways that we can achieve that reduced energy availability during training so we're going to go through those now one by one Number one is training twice in a day. If we train twice in a day and both sessions are quite demanding, even if we eat in between, there might be less energy availability in a second session and that might elicit some physiological benefits. Number two is after a long sleep. This is the most common form of fasted training. So you train the evening or the day before, you have an evening meal, you go to sleep, you use some of your energy for growth and repair and recovery uh, and just staying alive during sleep and then you wake up the next day and train again straight away with lower energy availability and potentially lower blood sugar levels depending on what you ate. That's fasted training and it's what most of us think of when we think of staff training. On to number three. Number three is another one that we probably don't think of when we think of staff training but we do quite regularly and it's the longer session so a long weekend ride or brick session where we start off quite well fed and fueled we might even have some energy during the session but the court the session is long enough the intensity is high enough that we drain those stores particularly of carbohydrate and end up uh, really kind of hitting the wall maybe or slowing down or just having less energy availability towards the end of the session Four is low energy availability during recovery. So you train the session, but then instead of coming back and having a meal or recovery drink or something straight away, you just don't have anything and you let your body recover with whatever it has stored inside of it. And so we come on to our last one, number five. Number five is just having a general diet which is low in carbohydrate and high in fat so your body is always starved of carbohydrate and this is another method over the last few years particularly has become increasingly popular so we've defined what star training is and we've looked at five different ways that we can achieve star training but why would you what are the benefits well let's look at those next Research shows that there might be numerous benefits to training or recovering uh, with lower energy availability, at least from time to time. We're just gonna go into three of those benefits now. So the first is that you might get improved fat utilization, particularly if you're training or recovering with lower carbohydrate availability, you might improve the body's tendency uh, to use fat as its fuel source. Now that might have another benefit and that is improved body composition. So if you have or carry some un unwanted body fat, doing that might mean that you can lean down a little bit more, improve your body composition, improve your power to weight ratio and improve your performance. The third one is interesting and it's only really come out of the research in the last few years and that there is evidence to suggest that particularly if you recover in a carbohydrate depleted state, you might actually adapt to exercise, particularly lower level exercise, a little bit 
better. Now we need to be careful with that one because we don't want to run the body down too much, but on occasion, that might be something that you can use to get more out of the training session that you've just done. But there might also be some negatives and we need to touch on those, so we'll look at those next. Now we've just looked at three positives, so now let's look at three potential negatives. And again, this is not a comprehensive list, it's just three that I've picked out for you today and for this video. So the first one is that despite the fact that our body might improve its ability to utilize fat, that doesn't equate to an improvement in performance in the vast majority of studies. So if we're looking to improve our long distance, middle distance, Ironman distance triathlon, a half marathon or a marathon time, the research generally shows that while we can increase our body's ability to utilize fat, we don't improve our performance. And for most of us as athletes, that's the point. So it's quite a key area um, of the whole debate. The second negative might be related to that. And it's because while we can increase our body's ability to utilize fat, we down-regulate the body's ability to use carbohydrate. And as we know, carbohydrate is our body's go-to source of fuel in higher intensity exercise performance, just like we would be tapping into in races or events. The third thing is that what we see is while there is again that initial benefit, if we look at um, a training camp or training across a week, while there might be some initial benefit, performance and training quality tends to suffer as the days go on. So by the end of the week, you might not be training as well without the carbohydrate that you need as you would have been if you'd maintained a higher carbohydrate diet through the course of your training week, training cycle or training camp. So having looked at the positives and negatives, the big question is, do you need to do it? Do you need to do any starved training? Do you need to do any training or recovery with low energy availability? Well, the first thing is to think is, why are you doing it? Now, if you're doing it to change your body composition, to lose a little bit of body weight, you need to think, well, how much do you need to shift? How much have you shifted already? If we look at most athletes and we look at the research, there isn't much more of a shift than about five, maybe as much as 7% reduction in weight from winter training to race weight. Now, a lot of amateur athletes might swing a little bit more than that. If you know how much your general off-season weight is and you know how much you're weighing now, you might already have got most of that change in place, in which case, that would suggest that you don't need to do any of this staff training to change your body composition anymore now. If there needs to be a bigger change, then the idea would be that you would wait until the next off season before you then try and shift again over the course of the next whole year cycle, rather than trying to rush it now, which might reduce immunity. The next thing to think about is what is your event? What are you training for? If it's anything shorter distance and more high intensity, this kind of carbohydrate depleted, um, low energy availability training is probably going to be less useful for you. But then we also need to think about your completion time. So it's not just a case of saying, well, you're an Ironman athlete, so yes, you want to be doing some of this. If you're a faster Ironman athlete, then again, you want to be making sure that you can utilize carbohydrates really, really optimally. The benefit of low energy availability training might be for those athletes who compete at middle or long course uh, triathlon or endurance events and who compete at a lower level at a lower intensity and take a longer amount of time. So if that's you, then maybe this is something for you to consider. That said, cast your mind back to the start of the video and we highlighted five different ways that you could uh, train or live with low energy availability. Now each of those has a different mechanism of action and so each of those has a different benefit and each of those might have a different benefit for you as an individual. So 
they're possibly things that you need to test and try for yourself to see which you feel you can do comfortably and which holds the most benefit for you. But there's at least one more factor that we need to consider. That factor is, what point in the season is it? Because if you're just building up to a really big event, and as I record this, we're just easing the restrictions out of lockdown, some events might be on the horizon, there's no point rushing into a whole load of star training at a point where you're also trying to do some high intensity stuff. You're just risking running down your immune system, increasing risk of injury. You're much better to step back and think, when can you place this into your training cycle as in the build up to next season? This might be something that fits better for you pre-Christmas or post-Christmas or just in a build phase at some point in the spring rather than during the summer where the intensity and the quality of training needs to be really high. So what we've done is we have looked at what staff training is and we've looked at the positives and the negatives and we've looked at whether you need to do it or not. But what we haven't done is look at how you do it. If you're going to do it, what are the things that you might want to consider? Well, there are a few. So first of all, adaptations take about three days. So if you want to increase your fat utilization, it's going to take you three days to get into that more fat adapted state. It's going to take you three days to switch back into a more carbohydrate adaptive state. So you want to make sure that you allow time for that. And if you're preparing for an event and you want to make sure your body is going to utilize carbohydrate for that event in time for the start, you want to give it at least three days of a higher level of carbohydrate in your training and living. A second point that we want to think about is that if we're going to be doing some star training, then we want to make sure the body doesn't go straight to protein and muscle breakdown for its energy source, which if we starve ourselves too much is what it's going to do. You might spend a long time trying to build strength through the off season or through the season. You want to maintain that. So adding amino acids and proteins to uh, drinks through the day can be a really, really important way to make sure that you enter that low energy availability state. You reduce the level of carbohydrates available, but you don't lose muscle mass and time. The third thing is to think how to strategize uh, when you put this star training, low energy availability training into your training plan. So I wouldn't be doing it haphazardly, I'd be planning with a coach and nutritionist when you do these types of training to get the most benefit. Now I realise that this video has been one where I haven't given you many answers but this is one of those areas that doesn't have many answers and you're much better to go away, read some more, use this as an introduction to the topic and work out how uh, you can do this for you and what works best for you. Again, any questions, please post them below and I will do my best to get back to them or post another video answering some of those questions. Also, please like and subscribe. It really helps people to find this content and I hope to see you again for another video very soon. Bye-bye.